welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 15 in our series statelesscode.com WordPress. And this is our first retrospective of the statelesscode.com series. We've done uh, a series of retrospectives on the, uh, the Nerd Dice Ruby Gem series. And uh, just for those of you who haven't watched the other series, what we do in the retrospective is we kind of review what we've done since the last retrospective. So in this case, it will be um, through the entirety of the project so far. And then we'll, um, using the agile principle of continuous improvement, look at what went well, what can be improved, and then come up with some uh, action items, ideas for improvement. So that's what we're gonna do here. So just to review, uh, if you, haven't watched the other videos. In episode one of this series, I went and um, did some basic setup and configuration of the stateless code site on Bluehost. Um, didn't look like this at this point. It was kind of the, the typical WordPress setup sort of stuff. If I go into localhost here, You'll get the idea. No, I won't do that now. All right, so I logged in here. So it was basic kind of general settings sorts of things that we were doing on the, um, the first episode there, just kind of getting the thing calling, naming it stateless code, that sort of thing. And then in uh, we went on to set up our our local development in episode local development environment in episode two. So we installed Apache, made sure that we had the Linux Apache, MySQL, or MariaDB, and um, PHP all set up and working, and so that we could go to localhost, um, install WordPress to uh, locally and then um, boot it up. So that was the second episode. Episode three, we started working on our theme development using Sage uh, from Roots and forked that project. I didn't really fork it, imported the master branch as of uh, a particular commit, started making changes to that. These are all in our backlog for various things. So, um, doing things like the about page, um, basic layout. We used uh, this theme right off of the match master branch for version 10, which hasn't been released yet. But one of the things I really like that version 10 kind of has by default is its use of Tailwind CSS. So we did a lot of stuff in configuring uh, Tailwind in order to make the, the site more responsive and doing things like these gradients and um, offsets and stuff like that, which are much easier with Tailwind than they are with uh, just raw CSS or uh, a lot of the other frameworks out there. So then uh, we can continue to iterate on that. We've got the 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 header working, the uh, the post content area. We had uh, some work on the some basic work. You can see it's not nearly to where I'd like it yet on the sidebar, on the footer. I actually made the mistake of putting the footer here because my test data made the footer look like another side set of sidebar content. So we'll fix that in the future, but we've got kind of a little bit of duplication here and um, some non-idiomatic Sage and WordPress development that will um, will improve upon, but uh, we got there. We uh, built we built the built the the at least the first version of the the theme that we were going to deploy using Yarn Build Production. We got it into the WordPress themes directory of um, the real stateless code site on Bluehost and then activated our theme, did a little bit of configuration of some widgets, and this is where we stand. 
took the website out of uh, preview mode and so now you can go to statelesscode.com and see our hello world of taxation is theft post so we've got that we got uh, we did some work on making sure that we could get a, a code uh, formatting plugin working and displaying the way we want it to and some um, also some making sure that uh, embedding YouTube worked as intended we created an about page here so it's not the best thing in the world but it's it's there and um, we kind of went by the the agile agile idea of the minimum viable product and then iteration on it so we've got this live uh, we'll continue in subsequent episodes iterating on it making things better making improvements and uh, but also posting content on it actual live content on it while we're doing that so some of this will be some of what i'll be doing is more of these videos where i'm uh, doing WordPress theme development, potentially in the future, plugin development or more uh, complex stuff with Laravel Blade. But we'll see what happens. But it's kind of small, releasable increments whenever we have something that's kind of a, a releasable uh, increment, we'll, we'll release it and um, make the, the site better as we do so. So that intro and recap out of the way we'll head over to uh, retro where I do my retrospectives so again because statelesscode.com WordPress isn't my first series that I'm doing retrospectives on there is an existing uh, backlog of action items from previous retrospectives so kind of across different projects and video series there are going to be some items on this list here that are uh, from that, that originate from other video series we'll take a look at them all all at least all the active ones each time even if you haven't watched the other retrospectives you can go back and watch them or you can just kind of um, I put links to uh, so that you can skip ahead if this isn't something you're interested in so looking at our existing action items, um, getstatelesscode.com live was an action item from Nerd Dice 0.4. Uh, so that was in progress and we can now move this to done because statelesscode.com is live. Um, so um, we've got an action item about getting the, the other dice um, done with S SVG. So I've done D20. I have not done D12, D10, D8, D6, D4. So I have not started that yet. So we'll just leave that one as is. Reduce needless mouse movement and ums and ahs. You can see that's still a work in progress. It has been a work in progress for a while. It's getting better, but not something I would go to move to done quite yet next issue is being extra certain of paused and unpaused status in obs so open broadcaster software is what i use to record my screen and audio as i'm doing these code coding videos and and everything and so i've had multiple situations where either i've thought that i was paused and there was kind of just non-value add menial typing that I have to edit out or even worse when I would think that something is unpaused and it's paused and I lose content and stuff that I do and have to go back and kind of re um, re explain what had happened while the video was paused so um, this is this has gotten better I don't there may have been maybe one or two minor snafus in the stateless code series but it, it's gone fairly well in that regard there have been very minimal amounts of accidental not realizing whether I'm paused or not 
and then uh, looking for opportunities to split stories which will result in shorter videos possibly if you when we're doing test driven development which I I'll need to add that as a um, in action I'm here to figure out a way to test this theme um, so that I've got some more confidence in what I'm doing so um, we'll add that to our um, our retro for statelesscode.com when we get there and that's the end of our in progress action items or the active action items we'll leave the inactive ones alone so here is our board for this release as you can see the theme is the Emperor's New Groove one of my favorite animated movies um, so we've got um, kind of these three columns what went well things to improve and then action items so we, we kind of go one by one through these discuss them talk about the um, ways to get better and that's how we go it has been a lot of blood sweat and tears to to get here foreshadowing yes the other thing that we do in our retrospectives as of last retrospective where i did a kind of magic by queen is mediocre karaoke which happens at the very end of the video so that those who are more sensible and can press the stop button just are interested in the the agile craft and not the silliness uh, can do that and if you are a glutton for punishment you can just keep uh, keep going till the end and um, learn your lesson so anyway boom baby let's see what we went well so we went from zero to a website with a custom theme in a short time period so the part of the decision there is that i i wasn't too thrilled with any of the out of the box themes that came and uh, again even though i'm completely new at this i figured me struggling through and muddling through this might help somebody in the future who wants to do something similar in terms of customizing and now you've got somebody who's uh, kind of one chapter ahead of you maybe but um, these videos are all available so I learned some tailwind in this case in this iteration and release and I really like it so t tailwind the way that it works and you can see it by watching the videos is by let me at least go there by using a bunch of utility classes to modify how the um, the styling of a page is done and so it winds up and then you can do things like refactoring out a series of repeated um, styling classes into a directive that like whenever you've got another kind of class controlling class you apply all of those subclasses so it kind of works well for kind of the the don't repeat yourself side of things and it's good for messing around and iterating on things so uh, I learned some modern WordPress and uh, Laravel Blade. So Laravel Blade really, in a lot of ways, reminds me of Ruby on Rails in terms of how it operates. So it's got kind of the, the, the at least the layouts side of thing where it's got an interpolation similar to how ERB works in uh, Rails views. It's got the, the layout with the yield directive and stuff like that going on so it's even though I'm not experienced with PHP or a Laravel the, the the interface of it is um, something that it 
um, that resonates with me. So the the sage starter theme was a good find. So back around episode three, I was I was initially thinking of going with um, WordPress's or Automatic's underscore s theme, which is essentially abandonware. So it's they've got open pull requests. They haven't touched or done anything to the master branch in probably two years now. And so the Sage starter theme was a good find. It's got active development. It's got the MIT license, which I much prefer to GPL, which it, it's hard to find a non GPL theme in the WordPress world. Um, so that was uh, good in a lot of ways. And I've, I mean, it, it doesn't start with a whole much, a whole bunch customized or anything like that. You have to do all that yourself. But the fact that it's responsive and that part of things is um, is really good, and um, it's um, not too hard to customize and work on. So the as noted here, the the code formatting that I showed in the when I went into the more detailed version of the, the post there, the, um, can't think of the name of the plugin off the top of my head, in Lighter. In Lighter code plugin was really easy to, to load up and install and it provides me with what I need. So that was uh, really easy. And then the, the Gutenberg, just standard modern WordPress uh, way of making posts. It's really easy to embed YouTube videos. So that was something that I thought I was going to have to find a plugin for, and it was just done natively by WordPress. As noted, the site and theme are responsive to different screen sizes. So if you go here to the main page, We click on the mobile device here, so it goes down to mobile and degrades um, nicely there, and it um, works with the various breakpoints when you're dealing with your your page size. So. That was a nice thing. All right. Pull the lever, Kronk. Wrong lever. Why do we even have that lever? So let's take a look at things to improve. So as noted, there are a couple of situations where I'm not developing things idiomatically and working against the framework. So the content of the footer would be an example of that. There's uh, a social links widget in WordPress that I could have just used instead of coding all of this in HTML, which I wind up undoing and then bringing, essentially moving this down there, move the archives into the sidebar. And um, that'll be one of the, the first things we do post retrospective in terms of development. But um, yeah, there, 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 there are a couple other places where I, I, I know I'm not developing idiomatically, like putting link a bunch of links, at least having them in as variables is better than hard coding them, but there's probably a, a canonical place to put that, and I'm still finding my way. So, um, yeah, well, now I feel really bad, bad llama. There was a situation in the, I think in the last episode where I went and tried to upload the theme and maybe the second to last episode when I tried to upload the theme to Bluehost. So there are a ton of individual files there. So don't use uh, SCP recursive to get something like that to the site. It will take you um, more than half an hour. Whereas if you zip it, and then upload it and then unzip it, you're talking about 
a minute. So just uh, something to watch out for if you ever send a theme over, a, a Sage-based theme over to WordPress. The uh, the other thing, so as noted, I'm rusty with WordPress. I had my personal site, uh, michaeldushman.com, since probably 2008 or so. And you can tell by looking at the design of it that it has been around since 2008 or so. So maybe as, after we get stateless code into the state where I want it, uh, maybe a, a, a future thing will be going back to michaeldushman.com and redesigning that and getting some, get, making it more uh, modern and better uh, in terms of its um, layout and design. Uh, and then finally, going with the Sage Master Branch added another level of difficulty um, over going with an established release. I mean, I, I do like the fact that it's that Tailwind is essentially the default now instead of Bootstrap, but um, I'm there are so many learning piece, moving pieces in my learning. So modern WordPress, I'm not familiar with. Tailwind, I'm not familiar with. PHP, Laravel Blade, Sage, all these things, and, and adding in kind of a uh, an, a non production released version of Sage along with um, it, it, it's not the best um, kind of the, the one drawback to Sage is not the best um, documented uh, item out there. Tailwind is on the other hand is extremely well documented and you can um, just search for the thing you want to do and um, kind of have that have your documentation window open have a playground window open and then um, be working on your uh, your stuff for your site and it, it works pretty well. Oh, let me add in another item here. So I added in no automated testing. We talked briefly about it earlier, but that's a that's a big deal for me. Uh, I have a whole video about why I spend so much time on software testing and not having or really knowing the testing side of things makes me very uneasy. Um, that combined with me not really knowing what I'm doing in the framework is um, not it, it not something I'm comfortable with. So I need to find a way to uh, figure out how this is usually tested and apply that. So that leads us to some some action items. So, sharp rocks at the bottom, big waterfall ahead, most likely. Bring it on. The, uh, so I obviously, action item, learn more about modern WordPress widgets and plugins. The, there was a lot, a lot has changed since I did a bulk of my WordPress um, work on michaeldushman.com. And so the, the there, there's some relearning there about how to do that, how to incorporate those things with themes and all that stuff that I'll have to kind of catch up on. Uh, so one, one thing in the, the readme here is that you can use yarn start to compile assets when um, when changes are made and start a browser sync session. So that is um, something I'm, I'm going to do in the future. One of the reasons why I was hesitant to use um, why I didn't make more heavy use of directives was because it was requiring a recompile every time I change the file. So uh, we'll see how that works and if we can get it to work then I will um, make use of it in the local development environment. So here, so start catching up on posting already published videos to statelesscode.com. I've got 
over a hundred videos on YouTube and Facebook and uh, and whatnot. And so, ideally, everything that we, that I publish should have a homepage at statelesscode.com with kind of more detailed show notes and code examples and stuff like that. And so I've got a, a very large backlog of um, stuff to catch up on there. And that'll be just kind of chip away at it over time. Uh, another action item is to, uh, and I talked about it some in this beginning of this video, right in our article on why I chose uh, Sage over underscore S for my theme in um, theme development and that um, just a, I think will come in handy as a, um, an article for the, for the site. And then um, explore more with Tailwind. I'm uh, really liking it. I'll probably wind up using it in most of my Rails development going forward as well. Um, so there, there have been some other, I started out using Bootstrap like way back in, when Bootstrap was really heavily um, coupled with jQuery and stuff like that. And then I, I did, a, I'm not, I mean, it's on my GitHub as I'm learning, but th there's a book called Modern Front End, Front End uh, development with Ruby on Rails, and the beta version of that book used Bulma as its um, front end um, framework. And then when they they actually released the um, the final publish version of the book, it switched to Tailwind. So I've kind of got a couple of different routes that Tailwind is um, becoming a more prevalent framework and me learning it and using it here helps me get better at using it on Rails and vice versa. So we'll take some learning from that. There's one more item relevant to the, um, so the, the no automated testing will create a, an action item there. Thanks for watching this stateless code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft. So, you forgot to hit the stop button. You screwed up. You know that what you did was wrong. But the question is, how are you going to make things right? Maybe you were trying to be cool, clicking on some link one of your friends told you to click. But take it from a guy who's been clicking on links for 25 years. The only way to be cool is to follow the rules. You should think long and hard about what you've done while you listen to me singing Spinning Wheel by Blood, Sweat, and Tears.
let the spinning wheel ride talk to you about one of the most valuable traits a computer programmer can have. Patience. Sometimes patience is the key to victory. Sometimes it feels like it leads to very little and seems like it's not worth it. And you wonder why you waited so long for something so disappointing. How many more of these? Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.